In this video, I'll be walking you through a quick tutorial on how you can use Cursor, the AI powered code editor to its fullest potential and showing you some features that you potentially may not have known. I am not gonna claim to be an all knowing expert on all things Cursor, but I will say I am an avid user that uses their product every single day to code out various applications. And because of that, I've done my research on Cursor, some of the various features that it offers. And I wanna share some of those features with you today. So I'll be showing you a quick beginner tutorial on how to use Cursor more effectively for coding. So now let's get into it. All right, so right now I have my Cursor code code editor opened up. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to be walking you through an actual real code base of mine. And it's a code base for this one tool that I'm building. It's called Monty.ai. You can find it at the URL right there. It's essentially a SaaS tool that's a mobile app and website that is a suite of productivity tools to help you get your done more quickly and to make work easier. Check it out at Monty.ai if you're interested. But back to the code base. All right, so tip number one is during the setup process of Cursor, if you already are a VS Code user and you already have VS Code installed, you have the ability to sign in and sync all of your your extensions from VS Code within Cursor. Because remember, Cursor is a fork of VS Code, so all the extensions within VS Code should also work within Cursor. So then it's truly just one click setup to get your entire Cursor IDE set up to match your VS Code setup. And then now transitioning over into some more specific Cursor optimizations that you can do. Number one is if you hit the settings icon up here, you can actually add rules for the AI to follow. So for myself, I'm primarily a mobile app developer and a full stack web developer with React or Next.js. So as you can see, I have specific instructions instructions right here saying when building a react based application, always return the syntax in ES6. When developing a Next.js application, make sure everything is styled within Tailwind. And then for Expo React Native applications, I make sure to apply all the styles inline and I don't want to use style sheets just because I hate them. So you can do any type of customization that you want with the AI here. You can prompt it however you want any custom rules there. So that's the first feature that I want to highlight. All right, so now let's go over to some more specific cursor basics. So with cursor, just like any other AI code editing assistant, you can do the whole inline completion, tab to complete of what your next line of code is gonna be. So the very first feature of Cursor that I wanna highlight is just the command K prompt. Essentially with command K, you highlight a block of text and you press command K and then it opens up an inline editor right here where you can start instructing it to do whatever you want with your code. Refactor, write more code, whatever you want, you can do it here. If you wanna open up an actual proper chat interface, you can actually instead hit command L to chat instead. And then within the chat window, it essentially doesn't auto apply all the changes that you want. And you can chat back and forth, request more edits, and just get a little bit more context of some of the changes that the code editor is doing. And then the next version that's even more powerful than the chat window is actually Command I, which or Command Shift I, which opens up Cursor Compose. So if you'd see, I just did Command Shift I, and then that opens up Cursor Composer in the entire full screen view. But then if you just do Command I, it'll just show up right here in this mini window. And essentially what Cursor Composer is, is a super powered version of the chat tool that actually applies changes across a variety of files, multiple files at once, whereas the chat command L or the inline editing command K, it mostly just changes that specific one singular file of code right there. So compose is really useful if you know you are anticipating a lot of changes across multiple files. So one way that you can see that I've used cursor compose for is for localization. So for my app Monty, I essentially translated all the strings across like 50 different languages. And the way that I did that was with cursor compose, what I would do would be in a specific page. So this is my onboarding page. I used to have a bunch of hard coded strings, but instead what I did was if you look at the chat history right here on the side, I told cursor compose to move all the strings to find in my onboarding index.tsx file and move the strings into the en, the english.json file for localization purposes. And because I did that within cursor compose, it applied the changes to both files. It updated the onboarding.index file, and then it also updated the actual english.json files with all of my localized strings there. So that's a powerful way that you can use Cursor Compose. Another feature within Cursor that I think not many people know about is if you go into Cursor Compose or Cursor Chat, you can also start attaching images here. And essentially what that means is you can provide a certain image and use that as context within your Cursor Chat window. One of the most powerful ways that I personally found to use this tool of attaching an image is when I was building my Monty application right here, you can see that I built a mobile application, but this is actually maybe the first or second mobile application that I built. It's my first mobile application in like two years that I built. So because of that, I was building everything in React Native, but I actually didn't know how to build it all out. So what I would do would be I would find other mobile apps that I like, take screenshots and then attach that image into my cursor chat and then tell cursor to recreate the UI attached in that screenshot. Or another thing that I would do within Figma, I would create a certain component within Figma, like you can see here, I would straight up just screenshot this image and then paste that image into my cursor chat window and tell it to recreate the UI there. Now it doesn't get a 100% 
perfect every single time, but it does like 70 to 80% of the heavy lifting to lay out the general UI component. And then I go in and then fix the last 20 to 30 residual percentage. Now, another thing you can do is also mention files like at certain files within your chat, your inline edit, your command K or within your cursor compose. You can straight up just do at and then go mention any file. So you can see, you can go through any of these files that I have right here. Then you can provide more context into your chat window, very specific context into your chat window to reference that information to build out a certain code or a certain component. Now, the way that I personally use this is I am within my app Monty is the fact that my backend is powered by Superbase. So what I often do is I have all of my types in Superbase laid out in my database.types file right here. So oftentimes writing a brand new feature or doing some type of code editing, I'll make sure to reference my database file, my type database file, and then tell cursor to write out certain code. And then it'll always have the context of the database in hand to do any type of database operations there. Now, other powerful ats that you can do is you can also do at web. So this allows cursor to browse the web for you as well and potentially get additional information from the internet that it may not have readily available. One of the most powerful things that I love cursor for is the at docs command. What the docs command does is it allows you to upload a documentation from any website that you want and then cursor automatically then indexes that entire documentation within cursor and then it'll code using that additional updated information. And you can see right here, it has some already pre-added ones like Amazon EC2, Active Admin, whatever. But then I manually added the Shad CN documents, the Upstash documents, and the Superbase documentation site just get the most update information. And the reason why this is really powerful is because sure, these AI models, I personally prefer to use Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but you can choose a variety of these tools to use for all your code edits. They're very powerful and they know a lot of information, but there's always a certain knowledge cutoff when the last amount of training data was uploaded. But then by having this documentation feature, you can make sure to always get the most up-to-date information for any type of documentation that you want. And then the way to add a new documentation is really simple. So just for example purposes, let's get the PyTorch documentation. And then if you do add docs, you can then click on this and then press add new doc. And you just paste in the URL of whatever API documentation that you want, press enter, and then it automatically indexes that website for you. And then you can label it, give it a custom name, give it an entry point and then confirm. And then from there, you could always reference whatever specific documentation that you want when you are writing out your code. So that's a quick overview on how I personally use Cursor. There are definitely way more features available to Cursor, but these are some of what I like to think the greatest hits, some of the most powerful, most obvious features that some people might not know about. This is the current workflow that I'm using. These are all the ways that I currently use Cursor, but there are way, way more features and way more tools that I personally do not know about. I know that for a fact, but I hope you enjoyed this quick little overview of how powerful Cursor can be when you're building out your projects. Definitely recommend trying it out and just exploring the various feature sets that Cursor offers that I didn't mention in this video. If you have any questions or comments about the video or about the features that I mentioned within Cursor, leave some comments down below and I'll do my best to respond to every single one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.